hooked up with those two families. And I could be wrong. So what did your research show? And if you could help clear that up a little bit. Well, well, they did have affiliations through family connections with the Lucchese's, with the Genovese, a little bit with the Bonanos, not really any Gambino or Colombo guys. Um, uh, but, you know, back at that time, Pleasant Avenue, East Harlem, the Lucchese's had a big operation going. Also the Genovese, you know, the 116th Street mob, yep. which later became Fat Tony Salerno's kind yep. of fiefdom. Um, so those were the two kind of dominant mafia families that were operating in that area. So, um so they, they were kind of independent in the sense that they were, uh, you know, street level guys, really. For And then as they became more valuable to the mafia and some of them became made guys, then they start becoming you know, more patterned after the traditional families. Now, so this is where it gets interesting. In your okay. research, right? Could you be like an active member of the Purple Gang, right? Don't worry about the noise. We have a lot of ambient noise. Kids here and there, so don't worry. People watch your armchair NBA are used to it. Those on the audio beat me up, but listen, it's a real and roll podcast. We don't really edit. So, so Scott, with that being said, though, um, could I be a guy in the Purple Gang and be a Cosa Nostra main member? Well, I mean, technically you can, but really once they start getting made into the families, the Purple Gang kind of starts disseminating. And this is around the early 80s. So as guys start becoming made members, the Purple Gang as kind of this, and it was kind of a little bit of an amorphous entity, starts to fade away. Yeah. However, the name sticks to it. So you'll see guys, a perfect example, when Michael Meldish is killed in 20, yeah, uh, you know, 2013, former Purple Gang leader. Th this name that gets stuck with some of these some of these guys, whether it's Mikey Mancuso or Danny Leo or Matthew Madonna, you know, decades later after they were really part of this gang, they're still referred to as, oh, he was, he was a purple gang guy. Now I know you did a lot of research and I don't know. I'm still like, yes, two X, Y's guys. You get three answers. Here's time for my back number. I know this. <laughs> um, and the edict <clears throat> on no drugs was from the seventies, you know, Carlo Gabino, et cetera. You, you had the Gambino brothers, which is another story, but mm -hmm. what I'm getting at is you kind of get, Hey, no, you know, Michael Francis, even John Panisi, you know, later and older uh, guys, no dealing, no dealing. But then these were some of the biggest drug dealers and some of these were made guys. Right. So was there kind of like, and I, and I heard about Matty Madonna where when he was a big H guy, it was when he wasn't made. And then when he made, got made, supposedly hung it up. So you hear all these different crazy, can you unfog that for me a little bit based off your research? Cause I'm kind of leaning more towards these guys were all drug dealers who were made guys or not all, but many of them were. Um, you know, for, for, you know, kind of snubbing the rules. But what did your research show? Yeah, exactly that. I, I think the myth that the mafia weren't involved in drug dealing is just a complete myth. Yeah. You're going all the way back to you know, 1920s era. Uh, but but in the case of the Purple Gang, uh, again, the, some of these families like the Lucchese's always had people that were involved in drugs, even made guys. And, and obviously the Gambinos, even with uh, Angelo Ruggiero and, you know, the Gotti guys dealing heroin. Um, sure, there were probably bosses and, and people that didn't want that activity that were maybe trying to go more legit or want to concentrate on the gambling. And, and I think as um, they saw the sentences, these sentences that drug dealers were getting increased, they probably put pressure on people not to do that. But I don't think it took definitely not at the street level. My understanding, these are some big money earners in the research, either individual or as a group in terms of dollars, millions a year, or do we kind of know some of the economics uh behind it yeah i it, that that's sometimes difficult because again like you said you asked you know a couple of wise guys you get three different yeah, answers it's, right. it's the numbers get thrown around millions you know tens of millions of dollars but but i think certainly in the drug game they were, they were bringing in significant amounts yeah. of money but again like a lot of these guys that money goes right out the back door as soon as it comes